Hello, my dear students. Welcome to Baijus Exam Prep. In this Ground Zero series, we will be now discussing about a very interesting topic of equilibrium condition. Why I am saying this is an interesting topic because all the analysis that we are doing, we are some sort of, we are always saying that the body is in equilibrium. Okay. So, first of all, let us understand what is the basic fundamental of equilibrium and what are the different conditions that need to be satisfied so that I can say the body in equilibrium. Right. So, uh, you might have come across this kind of example in your daily life or somewhere in, in your uh, childhood. There is a stone being kept one over another. And it is being kept in such a way that this, this complete system is not moving left or it is at, at a stagnant position. So, I can say this is an equilibrium system. I can simply say that this is an equilibrium system, right? Or we can say this, this combination of different stones is under equilibrium condition, right? Okay. But still, we, we, are, are, we, are we basically meaning that equilibrium basically means the body is at rest, right? The answer is no. It's not like this when a body is in motion, we can't say the body is in equilibrium. So let us try to understand from the very grassroots level, what is equilibrium? What are the different conditions? We'll be taking some examples and we'll be, from that examples, we'll be trying to understand the basic fundamental of equilibrium. Now, if I try to understand, let us suppose there is a ball and I'm just, uh, just having a slight push I'm giving and after some point of time, that ball will be coming to rest. Just like in, on your screen, you might have be able to see this. This ball will be coming to rest after some point of time. So this kind of condition, we call it as neutral condition. If I say the second example, let's suppose there's a bottle and I'm applying a small amount of force on that, a small amount of force, I'm just releasing that. Then what will happen after some point of time, it will be coming back to its original position. Or I can say this kind of system, we call it a stable system, right? And I can say a stable system is much, uh, is, if we can say it's a synonyms to an equilibrium condition solely. If I say the third example, let's suppose there's a marker and there's a marker applying a force on that marker. So what will happen? This marker will be toppling down. It will be uh, in, in a horizontal position, right? So it is not coming back to its initial position. So I can simply say this kind of system, we call it as unstable system. So whenever I'm dealing with, whenever you're having an idea of equilibrium conditions, we always say the body is in stable condition, right? It will be coming back to its mean position or I can say the total motion or the total force acting on that body will be equal to zero. Okay. So now let us try to understand what is mechanical equilibrium. Mechanical equilibrium basically means it is that state where in no physical changes occur and it is a state of steadiness. Whenever the net force on an object is zero, it is said to be in mechanical equilibrium. Let us complete the statement. It's not only that net force equal to zero will be called because it has an equilibrium. Even the body is having net moment equal to zero, then only we can say the body is in equilibrium. Okay. If I say net force equal to zero, this is only defined for when the body is coming across or the body on the body, we're having concurrent forces because concurrent forces normally has zero moment. Okay. So what we have seen that total force equal to zero basically means the total force in the horizontal direction and the total force in the vertical direction should be equal to zero. That if these condition is being satisfied, then I can say the body is an equilibrium. Right. So now I'm getting a rough idea that, sir, if I say if there is a body, something like this and this mass M and it is at rest. So can I say that uh, this body is in static or rest condition? Okay. Or I can say the total force acting on this body is equal to zero. Why? Because is it, it's at rest. So let us try to draw the free body diagram. There will be a normal reaction acting from the ground to the mass. There will be a weight mg acting downward. That's it. There is no other force. Okay. So I can simply say mg is equal to n or I can say the total force in the horizontal direction. What is this mg minus n and that is equal to zero. And I can simply say that this body is in equilibrium. Why? Because the total horizontal force equal to zero. That there is a, a, a we can say total vertical, not horizontal. Okay, fine. Total vertical force. There is no horizontal force that is automatically equal to zero. And definitely all these forces are as passing to the same CG point. So I can simply say that there is a moment equal to zero. Okay. So all this condition is being satisfied, right? All this condition is being satisfied. So try to understand if the body is having a concurrent forces. If a body is having a concurrent forces, okay, fine. Concurrent forces means 
the forces which is passing through same it is having same uh, uh, we can say uh, origin or it is having same uh, it is converging at the same point or a diverging at the same point right of diverging from the same point so that we consider as a uh, concurrent forces so in this if i try to calculate moment about point a the moment about point a will always be equal to zero for all the forces f1 f2 f3 f4 and i can simply say if i only have this do condition that is total horizontal force and total vertical force equal to zero i can simply say the body is in equilibrium the body is considered to be in equilibrium right the body is considered to be in equilibrium very easy so from this perspective, now we are able to understand, sir, according to Newton's second law, what is Newton's second law? There will be always a cause and due to that cause will be having an effect and F is equal to mass into action. So the force is basically considered as a cause and due to this cause only there will be an acceleration and that is the effect on the body. Because whenever we are trying to change the state of the body, that means if a body is at rest, will be at rest. Or if you are trying to make the body to be in motion, if I want to make that body to uh, to come to come to a, a motion, right? So definitely we need to apply a force. There will be a cause, okay? And if I say the net force acting on the body equal to zero, so somewhere we are saying that there is basically no cause, okay? Or we can say the acceleration on that body will be equal to zero. Right, the acceleration of that body equals zero. So I can simply say that a body will be considered under equilibrium condition when these two conditions will be prevailing. So now many students will be having a doubt. So that that does that mean when the body is at rest will be only considered as an equilibrium? The answer is no. Why? Because I want this condition need to be equal to zero. The total un the total force should be equal to zero. Can we say when a body is moving with constant velocity? When a body is moving with constant velocity right linear velocity so can we say the acceleration linear acceleration will be tending to zero if linear acceleration equal to zero then the effect is also equal to zero. that means that means it is not only if a body is at rest to be considered as an equilibrium if a body is moving with some constant velocity then also the body will be considered under equilibrium condition right the body will be considered as an equilibrium because the net force acting on the body will always be zero the net force acting on a body will be equal to zero okay let us take an example let us suppose this uh, mass is moving with some velocity v so whatever forces is being exerted on this mass the total force the total net force will always be equal to zero right and the total movement on this body will always be equal to zero this two condition if it is being prevailing that uh, even if the body is moving with constant velocity or even if it is at static or rest condition I'll be calling that as an equilibrium condition. Let us take one example. Let us suppose there is a block and I'm applying equal force. Let's say this is the weight of the block and this is a force which is exactly equal to weight. So I can I say this body is equilibrium? Answer is yes, because what is the net force acting on that body? Net force means we can have the total horizontal force and total vertical force. If I say total vertical force that is W minus F that is equal to zero. There is no horizontal force. The body is won't be moving, right? It won't be rotating. So I can say the total force equal to zero, the total moment equal to zero. So I can say the body is in equilibrium condition, right? Let us take one more example. Now in this case, let us suppose equal and opposite force is acting. So I can I say the so total vertical force that is F minus F equal to zero. But that is the only condition if I say the total force equal to zero, the horizontal and vertical force both are equal to zero. So can I say the body is in equilibrium? The answer is no. Are you able to understand this is some sort of couple being created? If I say the distance between the line of action of this force is E, there's a couple being created that is equal to F into E. If I say only the magnitude, that means the moment is not equal to zero. I can simply say the body is not in equilibrium. The body is not in equilibrium. So it's very important that if both the condition is being satisfied, then only I can say the body will be con uh, under the equilibrium condition. Let us take one more example. Let us suppose there is a rod. I'm just leaving that rod. So there is only weight W acting downward. So definitely what will happen? There's a net force. The net force acting in the vertical direction is not equal to zero. So this is not in equilibrium not in equilibrium okay if i say 
let's suppose there is an hinge point there is an hinge point over here okay there is an hinge point this is the weight w and there is a force f being acting from the hinge point right so definitely what will happen the body will try to move like this the body will be creating a movement so i can say net movement is not equal to zero that means the the body is not in equilibrium we can just visualize this a simple perspective or we can say let us suppose now now i i, I able to understand that in us in a body if the total force acting on a body is equal to zero and the total movement acting on the body about any point is equal to zero then only i can consider the body is in equilibrium condition right so if i say if i say there is a, a, a coplanar forces okay there are some uh, uh, we can say concurrent forces let us suppose there are some concurrent forces acting on a body okay let us suppose this is uh for example let's say this is 10 newton this is 5 newton and this is 8 newton okay so whether this body is in equilibrium answer is no because the net force acting is towards right this is the net force acting and that is equal to how much that will be equal to your uh we can say 15 that is okay that is 7 newton 7 newton acting so the net force is not acting and uh, the net force is not equal to zero but if i want to make this body to be equal to zero what i can say this is the resultant this is the resultant that we are getting this is the resultant that we are getting so if i try to apply a, a force which is equal in magnitude to the resultant but in opposite direction let us suppose if i apply a force which is exactly equal to nine, uh, 7 newton can we say the body is now in, in equilibrium condition because if i try to understand the total force now is equal to zero moment is already zero because this is a concurrent force these are concurrent forces right so now we are understanding one more important funda if you want to make a body to be in equilibrium condition so what you can do you can apply a force which is equal to the resultant but in opposite direction but in opposite direction so based on that theory or based on that fundamental there is one theorem that we need to understand that is lamy's theorem very effective very effective what is the lamy's theorem says that if three coplanar forces acting at a point be in equilibrium then each force is proportional to the sign of the angle between other two that means if i say there are three forces p q and r and there are three angles alpha beta and gamma so i can say the p divided by sign of other two that is alpha q divided by sign of angle between other two forces that is sine gamma right and that is equal to r divided by sign of beta sine of beta so this is basically lamis and it is very effective either what you can do you can take the method of resolution you can resolve the forces and you can say the total horizontal force equal to zero total vertical force equal to zero. you can go for this approach but that is slightly time consuming because you don't you might not be knowing about all the angles right or if you're knowing the angles you need to calculate two equations will be framed two unknowns try uh, that will be slightly difficult to calculate but by using this language you will be able to calculate very easily let us take one example how we need to solve the questions let us suppose there is a sphere which is having a weight of 100 newton which is tied to a smooth wall by an inclined spring as shown in the figure what will be the tension in the spring now whenever you are coming across this kind of uh, situation and definitely the body is in equilibrium condition that means the body is not moving okay so let us try to understand how many forces are acting on this sphere so there is one force that is weight w acting because it is in contact with the vertical wall they will be having a horizontal uh, normal reaction acting and there will be a tension force or tensile force right one thing you should always remember when you are taking the lemmy's theorem always try to take either all the force are moving away from the source point or all the forces are moving uh, towards the source point because why i'm saying that if i'm having a situation like let us suppose this is p force this is q force and this is r force right so definitely this is won't be giving you the perfect or correct uh, answer why because if i try to calculate angle between p and q or p and r you will be taking this as angle which is not correct you have to take you have to convert this because you can move any force along the line of action this is the basic principle of transmissibility this will be the angle between p and r not this one okay fine so now let us take this example now 
if I try to draw the FBD free body diagram, if I try to draw, right, if I try to draw the FBD of these forces on the sphere, I can say this is point O, this is weight W acting downward, there's a tensile force acting in this direction, there's a normal reaction force acting in this direction. This is an angle of 30 degree, this will be angle of 30, so this will be angle of 30, right? So question is, you need to calculate the tension in the string. The weight is given as 100 Newton. This is 100 Newton. Okay. So simply we can say T divided by sine of angle between other two. Other two forces are normal reaction weight. And what is this angle? This is 90 is equal to W divided by sine of angle between other two. So this angle is sine 120 or 90 plus 30. Right. So from here, I can simply say T is equal to W cos 30. Right. So this will be, what is W? That is 100. So 100 divided by root 3 into 2. So this will be 200 by root 3 Newton. So by using the simple approach, we are now able to understand the equilibrium conditions and able to solve many complex questions only by just drawing the free body diagram. If I try to draw the free body diagram, then we'll be able to solve it very easily. So this is all about equilibrium condition. So we'll be uh, soon meeting with more interesting concept of friction and we'll be talking about in detail with some live example. Thank you guys for uh, 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 watching this video. If you're having any doubt or difficulty, please do write in the comment section. So thank you guys. This is Suraj Gupit signing off. I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you. 